Amen. God bless you all this morning. Let us stand and we'll open our service with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are indeed grateful to be in your house this morning, Lord, a, a place of safety, Lord, and a refuge, Lord, from the craziness in the world. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would be amongst us this morning. Father, Lord, speak to us with your word, Lord, and May you may anoint our service this morning, Father, the words that are spoken, the songs that are sung. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you're here as most of all. And Lord, we appreciate the brothers and sisters that are here with us this morning, Father, and those that maybe can't be here, Father, that are tuned in. Father, we pray that you'd be our portion in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> you can be seated. I uploaded a couple of uh, the songs we normally sing since I lost most of them on our update. So <clears throat> I am, we'll try that. I am the God that healeth thee. <clears throat> I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Amen. You believe that this morning? Everything that we have need for is in his word. Amen. All we got to do is look there and find. So we'll go ahead and take our prayer request to the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Does anyone have one they'd like to make known? And my old uh, boss, Ron, has texted me this morning, and his uh, son-in-law went to the hospital this morning with a acute liver failure, so pray for him and his family this morning. Also continue to remember Sister Becky Shear in prayer, also, also for Sister Mary Hoffman, Brother Bill Caldwell, Brother Billy Paul, Brother Roger Giard in Tucson, uh, the church in India. <clears throat> Yes, it was destroyed by the cyclone. Believers in Malawi and uh, Mozambique for flooding. Brother Mark Bailey and his family in South Africa. Brother Victor Arquaros, that's in Kenya for his mother's health. Brother Jacob in Burkina Faso. Also for Brother Larry Jefford in West Virginia for health. Brother Joseph Branham for his unspoken prayer requests. Brother Edmund Kiabia in Congo Republic. Brother Peter Dix in Australia, and then also for our unspoken prayer request this morning, keep in prayer those that who cannot make make it here this day. Also, Brother Brian wrote a few more down. Brother Jean Andes or something like that. Uh, son in DRC is very sick with low, low blood level. Also, Brother Brian is uh, wanting you guys to pray with him about where to go. There's a couple invitations to go overseas. One of them is Burkina Faso. Um, and also, uh, there are three churches in India that were wanting him to come. Burkina Faso was kind of a little bit up and down the last time I was there. <clears throat> it uh, is kind of infiltrated with a lot of Muslims. So pray that if he does go there, that it is the Lord's will. It can be a little bit dangerous when you're outside the city limits. So uh, all our unspoken prayer requests this morning can be known by an uplifted hand, and we'll go to the Lord with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we 
do seek you in everything, Lord, that we do in our lives, Father, for the decisions that we make, Lord, and each step that we take, Lord, we pray that you're in everything that's done and said, Father, and Lord, for the places that Brother Brian may go this year, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would give him direction, Father, and guidance, Lord, in those, and Lord, for our brothers and sisters, Lord, that are asking for prayer, Lord, this morning, Father, as far as health goes, Father, we pray that you would grant them, Lord, healing to their body this morning, Father. May you give them comfort and peace, Lord. May your presence be felt, Father, wherever they are. Father, for the lifted hands this morning, Father, that are here in this congregation and someone that may be tuned in, Father, that has a prayer request upon their heart, Father, we pray, Lord, that your word would attend unto their needs this morning. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Let's sing that one, We Bow Down. We bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. We bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. You are all I need. It's your faith. I see in the presence of your life, we bow down, we bow down, we bow down, we bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. We bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. You are all I need. It's your face I see in the presence of your light. We bow down. We bow down, we bow down, amen. We want to confess that he is Lord here, amen, and not meet him at the great white throne. Brother Steve and Brother Don, if you would come this morning, we'll take up our tithe and offering. <clears throat> amen. Brother Don, if you'd ask the Lord's blessing this morning. Number 77 in your only belief book, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. <clears throat> oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the thing of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace through death into life everlasting he passed and we follow him there over us in heaven.
hath no more dominion For more than conquerors we are Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace His word shall not fail you promise believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory I hope that's your prayer this morning and your desire is to see him. So let us stand and we'll sing only believe as we get ready to hear the word. <clears throat> only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, Jesus, you're here, Jesus, you're here, all things are possible. Now that you're here, Jesus, you're here, Jesus, you're here, and all things are possible now that you're here. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength energy and this beautiful day Lord to come and worship you in spirit and in truth we ask you father that your divine presence would be among us this morning heal those Lord that have in need of healing be with those Lord that are in need of healing that are watching today as we pray specifically Lord for brother Bill Caldwell we ask you Lord that you would cast out that demon of cancer that has taken over his body. We commit, Lord, his healing to the cross of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Be with us, Father, during the messages today, during our day of fellowship. And Father, may our hearts truly be turned toward thee. And may we be preparing our souls, O oh God, for the going home. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we'll be again speaking on the two vines. We're going to look at the source, the evidence of God's seed life. To this point in our study of the two vines, we've been we've gone into the de definitions of foreknowledge, election, predestination, and then the word twins. I've broken down the study into four segments, of which each segment will contain several sermons that we will go into detail of each when we come to them. 
The first segment we've already completed, which is definitions, because there is no way that you will ever understand the subject of twins or the two vines if you do not understand what a biblical twin is, and if you do not fully understand the foreknowledge of God, his, his subsequent election or his choosing, and then his making sure his election is sure through predestination. We are told in Romans 9 that the purpose of God, uh, or the purpose and plan of God stands in election, not our choosing, but his choosing. Notice the wording as we read in Romans 9 and 6, not as though the word of God hath taken of none effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel. You, you have your twins again. Now what is the Apostle Paul saying here? He's telling us that although Abraham had many children, yet the seed of Abraham is not counted by his genetic offspring, but rather those who are the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. Therefore, we're looking at twins here, ones born after the flesh and ones who are born by the promise of God, which is the word of God. The Apostle Paul begins to explain this in the next verse. He says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So just because they're seed of Abraham doesn't mean that they're actually children of Abraham. But he says, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now, you cannot get any more plain than what Paul has been saying here, laying out this biblical doctrine of twins. Paul said, those born after the flesh are not the children of God, but those born by the word of God, which is the promise of God, they are the children of God. So one is not God's seed, while the other is God's seed. And Peter tells us that the promise in Acts 2 and 39 says, for the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So what promise is that? We read in verse 38. Then Peter saith unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, the gift of the Holy Ghost is God's life. God's seed. <laughs> now back to Romans 9. For this is the word of promise, and at this time I will come, and Sarah will have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also hath conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto the elder, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now remember, they didn't do anything. So for people to think, well, God looked at the very at the end and he saw what the people were going to do or what they weren't going to do, and therefore uh, he could choose them. Well, here it says they hadn't done anything, and God chose them. All right? So we see that the election of God is held preeminent with God. And then God uses the vehicle of predestination to make sure his election stands, which means it is fulfilled. As Brother Branham used many times, Romans 828, when he talks about predestination, he says, we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called, the, ch the chosen, the elected, according to his purpose. So predestination is actually Romans 8.28. God working all things for your good. So what does it mean then that all things will work together for the good of God's elected ones? He goes on to tell us, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate or predetermine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Notice again the order of events. First, we were in his thinking, in his thoughts, that is the foreknowledge of God, and knowing beforehand, then he chooses us, which means he elects us while we are in his thoughts, then to make sure that our end is what he elects us or ordains us to be, he predestines us to be conformed to the very image of the firstborn son. So the predestination is God working out the path to his foreknown glory to be in you, which glory was in Jesus Christ. And, and never forget, the glory is a doxa of God, his opinions, values, and judgments. And I'd just like to add here, in John 18, or John chapter 17, verse 20 to 22, when Jesus is praying for us, he says, and he's praying to the Father for us, he says, and Father, the glory which you've given me, I've given them. The doxa which you've given me, I've given them. The values, your opinions and values and judgments which you've given me, I've given them. That they might be one in the same way you and I are one. You see? So God and Jesus are not one like your fingers one. But Brother Brown said, God is the word and Jesus was the manifestation of that word. And you are the manifestation of his word. Therefore, you and God are one in the same way Jesus and God were one. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever get that oneness thinking because if you get that oneness thinking, you're no better than a Muslim or a Jew. 
They're both, they're both, they're both oneness. All right? Then the Apostle Paul tells us, Moreover, whom he, God, did predestinate, them he also called. He elected, he ordained, he chose. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So you see, the election, choosing, and ordaining is set in stone through God's predestinating our path to completion. Now remember, the same apostle said in Philippians 2.13, it is God working in you, both to will and to do. So the predestination, as I, as I mentioned last week, that, you know, that, uh, that, that um, pro-gnosko, it means that God actively participates. Well, if it's not him working in you to will and to do, then he's not actively participating, right? But the very fact that he is, he promised that he, it is him working in you to willing to do, it shows he's actively participating. He's pro gnosko All right? That's, that's your foreknowledge. The same apostle uh, also said that the confidence comes from the very fact that God who began the work in you will perform it. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of the very thing. What thing is that? That he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's not you performing it. It's him performing it. It wasn't William Branham up there discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. It was God showing him. He, he, he go, is that right, those things that I said? He didn't even know what he said. But people try to make William Branham out to be some God himself. He's not God. He's not omniscient. He's a man like you are. It's just so happens God chose him to do it, not you. You're a brother. He's a brother. But it's God. Just like the Bible says, you know, uh, there's one that sows, one that reaps. But it's God that gives the increase. You can sow all day long. You can, you can water all day long. But if God don't give the increase, there's, there's nothing going to happen. You see? All right. And, of course, this very same apostle tells us in, Rome, in Hebrews 12 and 2 uh, that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, he, if he's the author, he wrote it out. And if he's the finisher, then he's doing it. So just sit back and enjoy the ride. Now, the second segment will begin this morning, and it will focus on the source of each seed, or seed life. Now, when, when we say that we'll focus on the source of the seed, we must look at the source of life for that seed, each seed. In doing so, we'll identify the life and its attributes and characteristics. We're told this in the book of Genesis, uh, the book of beginnings, or the seed chapter. In the Bible, according to Genesis 1:11, every seed will bring forth after its kind or nature. It didn't say it might. Did you say there's a 50-50 chance that says it will? Now, this doctrine of twins was also established by Jesus himself in several places, as we saw last week in Matthew 13, where Jesus speaks of twins, or the two vines, when he speaks of the Son of Man going forth into the world, sowing his seed. And then the enemy, which is the devil, following him and sowing his seed. We also saw last week in John chapter 8, Jesus go into a long disputation with the Pharisees and identify the doctrine of twins and show us what is an evidence of being a child of God versus a child of the devil. And in fact, we also see mentioned in the church age book, the Pergamian church age, uh, where Brother Bram says, remember now, John the Baptist was both the prophet and the messenger of his day. He was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. When he was baptizing in Jordan, the word of God, Jesus, came to him. The word always comes to a truly filled, spirit-filled, and that is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice, the word always comes to the truly spirit-filled. That is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. That is what Jesus said when, uh, would be the evidence. He said, And I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Now we know that truth is, that, that thy word is truth. John 17, 17, he says again, John 8 and 43. <clears throat> Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. And remember the word, when you read the word hear, it means to understand. So they can't understand his word. Why? They don't have the Holy Ghost. Did you notice that Jesus said that the world could not receive the Holy Ghost? Well, in this verse, I, I just read it. Neither could they receive the word. Why? Because the Spirit and the word are one. And if you have the Holy, Ghost, uh, have the Holy Spirit as the prophets, the word would come to you. You would receive it. In John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Here again we find the word coming because of the Spirit of God. Again, in John 16, 13, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, the word, is come, he will guide you into all truth, thy word is truth, and he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, 
word of God, that shall he speak word. That shall he speak word. And he will show you things to come. Spirit bringing the word of prophecy. I want you to notice very carefully that Jesus did not say that the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost was speaking in tongues, uh, interpreting, prophesying, or shouting and dancing. He said the evidence would be that you would be in the truth, you would be in the word for, for uh, word of God for your age. Evidence has to do with receiving the word. Now the third facet in our study that we'll look at, seed, and then the fourth we will look at the evidence or the identifiable characteristics of the seed life. Now for the rest of this morning I'd like to establish the evidence of being God's seed, which means being filled with God life, uh, which we just heard Brother Bram say in the quote that he read from the Church Age book. Now from John 14, he read John 14, 26. We're going to read them all. Jesus answered and said unto him, if, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now there's two things. First of all, you're going to love the word. And if you don't love the word, he's not coming to you. And he's not going to abide in you. All right? Notice that the first evidence that you're God's seed is that you love God's word. And then Jesus said, and the Father will come into you and make their abode with you. That means they will live in you. Jesus then tells us the evidence of not being God's seed, which means if you are not God's seed, you are, uh, you, you are the other twin. He says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, my word. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. In other words, if you will not keep his word, you will not keep the Father's word either, because the words Jesus spoke are the Father's words. So we hear that God... Uh, we hear that God's seed will hear God and keep what they hear. These things have I spoken unto you, being, not yet, uh, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So if you are not teachable, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Now from his sermon, questions and answers... Brother Bram said, what is the evidence that a person is really filled with the Holy Ghost? John 14, 26. When the Holy Ghost has come, he will show you things to come. See, he'll, be a, he'll, he'll, he'll perfect it. man maids won't do it, and he is the Word. When he, the Holy Ghost, has come, he will identify himself with you in the Scripture. With the Scripture. And that is a true sign that the Holy Spirit is in you because it is the Word. Now look, what if you spoke with tongues? I just want to ask you that. Jesus said when the Holy Ghost come, what, what he would do? And what if you said, well, uh, what if you spoke with tongues, jumped up and down and shouted and everything else, and then come to the word, and I'd, be, and I'd tell you the baptism of, uh, approve you by the scripture as I have, that the baptism using the title of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is absolutely a misunderstanding in the scripture. Nobody was ever baptized like that. And you go ahead and hang on it anyhow? Could you tell me the Holy Spirit in you would do a thing like that? How can it deny its own word? <clears throat> you see? Well, how can, how can you deny the prusy of Christ when it's in the scriptures? Many, many places. Jesus taught it. Paul taught it. Peter taught it. John taught it. How can you call it, the, how can you call it a false doctrine? It, it, it just shows you don't understand. And I tell you what, the Holy Ghost didn't say those words. Now, so we, we see that we have a promise, and remember, the children of God are the children of the promise, as Paul said in Romans 9. And the promise is the word. If I give you my promise, what am I doing? I'm giving you my word. In 1 John 5 and 2, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. 1 John 3 and 10, In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither is he that loveth not his brother. Now righteousness means to be rightly wise, and therefore he tells us that those who will not do what is rightly wise, these are not the children of God. From a sermon, Feast of, of the Trumpets, Brother Bram says, And Jesus said, As it was in the days of Lot, so will it be at the coming of the end of the world, when the Son of Man, not the Son of God, when the Son of Man will be revealed. Hadn't had it through the ages. See, that perfect continuity of the Scripture, here we live in it. The mysteries, even the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, and away from the oneness idea. And these other things, how the Holy Spirit has moved that in and showed it perfectly, the true baptism of the Holy Spirit, the token, and everything and placed it, and how he placed every reformer, everything just exactly and see right before our eyes. And it's not in a corner, it's world known. Jesus, the Son of God, revealing himself by the scriptures, making the scriptures that had been predestinated to this day, like it was in that day and all the other days, to live. 
and to believe it is the evidence of the Holy Spirit righteousness right wiseness there is the word righteousness again so to believe what the Holy Ghost teaches you and he is the teacher that is the evidence of having his Holy Spirit which is the holy life of God which is right wiseness righteousness now the Apostle Paul confirms this in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 through 16 Says, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit, there's only one Spirit, there's only one the Spirit, and that's God's Spirit, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God knows. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So the very purpose of God giving us his spirit is that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words, wi words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, that's the carnal man, the, un the unregenerate man, received not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. It's impossible. Because they are spiritually discerned. So if you don't have the spirit, you can't discern them. But he that is spiritual, he that is spirit-filled, judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So you see, the evidence of being born of the Spirit of God, and thus a child of God, is that you receive what the teacher, the Holy Ghost, teaches you for the day in which you live. Now from his sermon, Shalom, Brother Bradham said, Now you call that fruit of the Spirit? Certainly not. Then, where is your fruit of the Spirit landing, landing up at? No more than you think of compassions and, and him going through a multitude of people there, multitudes laying, blind, crippled, afflicted, withered, halt, lame, and never healed any of them, full of compassion. People with a carnal mind will never know it. Seminaries don't teach it. It's a revelation. Certainly, fruit of the Spirit drops off there, doesn't it? Them priests had ten times the fruit of the Spirit. How would you know, know it's right? The manifestation of the spoken word of God being made manifest, light of the hour, certainly. There's what the evidence of the Holy Spirit is, be, believing the word of God when it's manifested. Now remember, the word revelation, according to our dictionary, says um, it says manifestation of divine truth. Revelation is manifestation of divine truth. So you can't have revelation by a mental understanding. You have revelation by seeing a manifestation of divine truth, and it becomes clear that's what it is. See, that's what Brother Brown said. God interprets the word by bringing it to pass. When you actually see it coming to pass, you're getting the interpretation. That's the revelation. That's the manifestation of the divine truth. All right? He was the word manifest. And some of them denied it, laughed at it, made fun of him, and called him a fortune teller, some evil spirit. There's evidence, speaking in tongues, there's the evidence of the fruits. The only evidence there is, is when a man believes a written word, when it's vindicated and walks in the light of it. Now, Jesus was the light of the hour because he was the promised word of the hour and tried to tell them so. But they were too much in darkness to understand it. So is it today. Let me just say this. If you are reading the Word of God and all of a sudden it dawns on you that what you're reading, you're seeing all around you, that's revelation. That's revelation. You're seeing that Word manifested. All right? Again, from his sermon, questions and answers, <clears throat> see what he Brother Brown said, now, that's no evidence of the Holy Ghost. See, you can't rely upon that. You can't rely upon the fruit of the Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit is love. And the Christian science exercise more love than anybody I know of. And they even deny Jesus Christ being divine. See, there's only one evidence of the Holy Spirit that I know. And, and that is genuine faith in the promised word of the hour. Now, those Jews come. They had more religion than the disciples had. They were better trained men in the scripture than the, than the disciples was because they were fishermen, tax collectors, and so forth. And they had real faith and genuine faith in what they were doing. Now, listen closely now. Don't miss this. See? When it comes to being fruits of the Spirit, kind and gentle, I guess there wasn't a one of them, those priests, but that would outshine Jesus Christ in it. He went to the temple, plaited ropes, looked upon them with anger, and turned over their cables and run them out of the place. Is that right? The Bible said that he looked upon them with anger. The Bible said that. That's exactly right. Well, then, anyway, I won't comment on it. Now, from Broken Sisters, Brother Branham said, Today I was talking with my good friend, Dr. Lievel, who who's present now. And he's quite a theologian, and so we usually have some pretty good discussions on the Scripture. He's very smart, and he asked me one time what I thought about the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost was the speaking in tongues. It's been many years ago, and I said, no, I can't see that. He said, no, neither do I. said, though I've been taught that, he said, uh, 
what would you think would be the evidence? And I said, well, the most perfect evidence I can think of is love. And so we got to talking on that, and then I thought, well, that sounded pretty good. So I just held, held that, if a man's got love. But one day, the Lord in a vision straightened me out, and he said that the evidence of the Spirit was those who could receive the word, neither love nor speaking in tongues, but receiving the word. Now, <clears throat> well, tonight we're going to get into some things, so I'll, you know, just bear with me here, because I, I won't, I'll, I'll spare the comment for right now. But From Christ revealing his own word, Brother Brown said, today so confused about the evidence of the Holy Ghost and so forth, Satan can impersonate any kind of a gift that God's got, but he cannot bring that word, word by word. How many times have you heard a minister preach and it sounds really good until all of a sudden at the end there's a zinger? He throws you a curveball. And also, where did that come from? He cannot bring that word by word. That's where he failed in the Garden of Eden. That's where he's always failed. That's where them, the tape on false anointed ones, or anointed ones, uh, they can be anointed with the Spirit, speak in tongues, dance, shout, preach the gospel, and still be a devil. It's the inside. Now remember, Jesus said, All the Father has given me will come to me. No man can come except my Father draws him first. John 6, 44. Now we've taken through the lesson to show you that you were in your, in your great, great, great grandfather all the way back, physically speaking, then that's what you are in physical being, nature. Sometimes a child will be born in a family red-headed. It's astonishing. It astonishes the father because there's nobody he knows of his people red-headed or the mothers. But if you go way back to several generations, you'll find out that somebody was red-headed. That seed keeps coming on down, and you, you come by the nature of the one from way back. Like Hebrews, the seventh chapter, said Melchizedek, said Abraham paid tithes to him when he was returning from the slaughter of the kings. And Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes, uh, for he was in the loins of Melchizedek, or the loins of Abraham, rather, when he met Melchizedek. Okay? So, in other words, we're looking at, you know, the focus here this morning is evidence of God life, God seed. All right? So then Brother Brown said, you see, there's certain things that will pop out. Okay, certain evidences, all right, of the one that you're descended from. All right? <clears throat> so these aren't quotes that are, you know, these are all saying the same thing. Now, again, we see in the Church Age book, uh, chapter 9, later in Church Age, Brother Brown said, now God says that they are naked as well as blind. I cannot imagine anything as tragic as a man who is blind and naked and does not know it. There's only one answer. He's out of his mind. He is, he is already deep in oblivion. His faculties are gone. Spiritual amnesia has set in. What else can it mean? Can it mean that the Holy Spirit has taken his leave of this day, of this last day church? Can it mean that men have put God out of their mind to such an extent uh, that it is happening even as stated in Romans 128? And even as, as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. It surely appears that something like that has happened. Here is a people who say that they are of God and know God and have his Holy Spirit, and yet they are naked and blind and don't know it. They are already deceived. They have the wrong spirit. The elect cannot be deceived, but it is evident that these, are, these others are. And we're going to get into that deception tonight. I'm going to show you tonight how close the two spirits are. They're in this message. It's not... Uh, it's not about message people and denominational people. It's about right here in this message. Amen. Every revival produces twins. Every revival. And Brother Brown, we, we read the quote last week. Even this revival, he said, produces twins. <clears throat> it's right in the message. Denomination, that's mark of the beast. Serpent seed. We're talking about now, we're talking about twins. You're talking about those that are genuinely Spirit-filled and those that are just carnal, but they come because of the same revival. They're birthed because of the same revival. The elect cannot be deceived, but it is evident that these others are. These are they who have become blind because they refuse the word of God. These are they who have stripped themselves naked to, by leaving God's care and protection and sought to build their own way of salvation, their own Tower of Babel by organization. Oh, how lovely and beautifully dressed they appear in their own eyes as they formed their general assemblies and the councils, etc., but now God is stripping it all away, and they are naked. For these organizations have but led them into the camp of Antichrist, into the field of tares, right up to their binding and burning. Objects of pity, indeed they are. Yes, pity them, warn them, beseech them, and still they go their way headlong to destruction, wrathfully turning away, and all attempts to save them as brands from the burning. 
Miserable indeed they are, yet know it not. Calloused and beyond hope. They glory in what is actually their shame. Defiant against the word, yet one day they shall be judged by it and pay the price of its awful indictments. Again, from Brother Ram's sermon, Thinking Man's Filter, he said, When you come into this world, you were born in sin. You didn't even come with a fighting chance. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. Within your own spirit, the desire of sin, a lover of sin, because you were born in sin. You didn't have a chance. <clears throat> but down inside of you somewhere, here, here you come, there was something in there that began to draw. And if you know it was something that told you that there was a God somewhere, and, and you re read his word, uh, then you took... You took the church and you took their ideas and when you was told better, but you never used a thinking man's filter. But when you use God's filter, which is a thinking man's filter, because all other filters will pass away, but mine shall not. And when you take God's filter and draw your life, your desires, if you draw your desires through God's filter, a thinking man's filter, there's nothing left but the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want the evidence of the Holy Ghost, there it is, when that soul of yours will line with the word of God in every respect, it shows you've drawn your life through the thinking man's filter, God's filter. Again from the Church Age book. Now comes this very good question I know that you are all anxious to ask. Why isn't the manifestation and evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost? Because you surely could not manifest the Holy Ghost unless you truly were spirit-filled. Now, I wish that I could say that that was right because I, I don't like to hurt people or walk on their doctrine, but I, I wouldn't be a true servant of God if I didn't tell you the whole counsel of God. That's right. Is it not? Just let, uh, just let us take a, a little look at Balaam. He was religious. He worshipped God. He, un, he understood the, the, the proper method of sacrificing and approaching unto God. But he was not a true seed prophet, for he took the wages of unrighteousness. And worst of all, he led the people of God into sin, a fornication, and idolatry. Yet who would dare to deny that the Spirit of God manifested through him in one of the most beautiful portions of absolutely accurate prophecy the world has ever seen? but he never had the Holy Ghost. Now then, what do you think of Caiaphas, the high priest? The, the Bible says that he prophesied the kind of death that, that the Lord should die. We all know that there is no record of him being a spirit-filled man, a uh, spirit-led man like dear old Simeon, or that sweet saint called Anna, yet he had a genuine manifestation of the Holy Ghost. We can't deny that. So where is manifestation as an evidence? It isn't there. If you are truly filled with the Spirit of God, you will have the evidence of the Word in your life. And again from the Church Age book, the Smyrnian Church Age, now you can begin to see why tongues is not the evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say in any age that uh, he that hath a tongue let him say what the Spirit is saying. You catch that? Now it's not talk, it's not talk. Let's talk the talk, no, it's, it's walk the walk. That puts tongues, interpretation thereof, and prophecy, etc., aside as an evidence. The evidence is hearing what the Spirit says, and, and Brother Brown tells other places, hearing means to understand. The Spirit is talking, yes, the Spirit is teaching. That is exactly what Jesus said that, that he would do when he come. John 14, 26, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And that is just what happened. That is how the Holy Spirit, or the Holy, uh, that is how the Gospels were written. These men had, had recalled to their minds by the Holy Ghost the very words that Jesus spoke. That is why the Gospels are accurate. They are perfect. But the Spirit did not only bring all things to their minds, but he taught them further on the truth uh, that they had already had. That is how Paul received his revelation. He said concerning it, But I certify you, brethren, that the Gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1, 11 and 12. He was taught by the Holy Ghost. From the Church Age book, again, chapter 5, the program in Church Age, Brother Brown says, and there it is. You can't claim that manifestation is the evidence of being spirit-born or spirit-filled. No, sir. I will admit that true manifestation is the evidence of the Holy Spirit doing mighty acts, but it is not the evidence uh, of the individual being spirit-filled even though that individual has an abundance of those manifestations. Again, from hearing him, he says, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. How many knows that? Sure, the Holy Spirit is a teacher. But we've adopted popes and bishops and everything else instead. But the Holy Spirit is the tutor and the raiser and the teacher of the body of Christ. Those who are led by the Spirit have no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Again, from Church Age book, he says, the Smyrnian Church Age. Now, when God is silent, we had better be silent. 
but when he has spoken, we had better speak too and say what he has already said. Remember, Brother Brown said, here's, here's, here's the, uh, um, he says, uh, he says, uh, and here is the, um, he says, the, 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 the word is in the bride and she knows what to do with the word. You remember that quote? Okay. So she, she knows when to speak and when not to speak. Now, when God is silent, we had better be silent. But where he has spoken, we had better speak too and say what he has already said. He told us the evidence or what would happen after being baptized with the Holy Ghost was that we would have the teacher come and teach all truth. But that teacher was an inside teacher, not an outside teacher. See, a lot of people want to say, well, I had brother so-and-so. He taught me and, oh, man, I know. Listen, you could sit under brother so-and-so and, and, and listen to every one of his tapes and know him back and forth. You could listen to him five times a day and not understand a thing he says if you don't have the Holy Ghost. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't have the Holy Ghost that think they do. But their life proves that they don't. But the teacher that was, uh, that teacher was an inside teacher, not an outside teacher. If the Spirit wasn't inside you, you wouldn't hear the truth and receive it by revelation if you heard it every moment of the day. That was the sign of the indwelling Spirit in the days of Paul. Those who were filled with the Holy, Spirit, Holy Ghost heard the word and received it and, notice, lived by it. Those who did not have the Spirit heard it only as carnal men, put a wrong interpretation on it, and went into sin. We're going to get into this this afternoon, or the, you know, at, at our evening service. Now from the Sardisian church, he says, Now, I am sure that you have noticed that those whose names were in the book of, in the book of life were a part of the, of the religious order of that day that centered around the true God and worship of him, though they did not worship according to the truth, the word. Like Judas, they didn't go all the way. See how Judas was chosen of God, he was instructed in truth. He shared knowledge of the mysteries. He had a ministry of power granted unto him, and he healed the sick and cast out devils in Jesus' name. But when the showdown came, he sold out for gold and political power. He did not go up to the Pentecost to, to receive the Spirit of God. He was a devoid of the Spirit. Make no mistake about it, a person that is truly baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ, receiving the fullness of the Spirit, will be in the Word all the way. That is the evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Judas failed. Multitudes fail right there. And when they fail to go in, go on in that word, their names are taken off the book of life. How many people have listened to tapes of a God-sent prophet in this day and their names will be taken off the book of life because they didn't go on with the word? These, listen, he didn't come just to teach his little doctrine. He came to perfect a bride. Again from the Smyrnian Church Age. Before I close this subject, I know there is a question in your mind. You'll want to know it if I believe in the doctrine of pre-existence. I don't believe in that Mormon doctrine of pre-existence of souls any more than I believe in reincarnation or the transmigration of souls. Be careful here and see, it th and see this. It is not the person that comes predestined eternally from God. It is the word or seed. That is it. Way back there, too far back for the human mind to grasp the eternal God in eternal thoughts, thought and decree, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans 9.13. And neither was born, neither had done good or evil. See, it was the thought, and then that thought became expressed. And God brought back Jacob because Jacob alone was seed. Jacob alone had the seed. That is why he had respect to the birthright and covenant of God. If you are true seed, you will hear the word. The Spirit will baptize you into the body of Christ, filling you and empowering you, and you will receive the word for your day and your age. See how clear the true evidence becomes when the word is revealed to you. And again, note, Jesus was the royal seed. He lived in a human body. When the Spirit called to him, the word manifested thought, he went to Jordan and was there baptized in water. Upon obeying the word, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and a voice said, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. The voice did not say, this has become my son. Jesus was the son. The Holy Ghost positioned him as that son before them all. Then having been filled thus, and the same pattern holds in, at Pentecost and, and even after, he went in demonstrated power, receiving the full revelation of God and, from, and, and uh, of God and from God for that day. What about you? You say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't born to be Messiah. No, but you're, you were born to receive Messiah. You ordained to receive him. Brother Brown again says, Church Age books, Marine Church Age. In every age, in every age is, is the age of the Holy Ghost for the true believer. 
I say in every age the evidence was the same. Those who had the spirit, the teacher, heard the word, and that spirit in them took the word and taught it, revealed it to them. And they were of the group that heard the messenger and his message and took it and lived it. What about those that heard the messenger of their age and, and didn't take it and didn't live it? Or those who said that they took it but they didn't live it? You see, three kind of believers. Now, from the Church Age book again, Smyrna, Church Age. The further, uh, to further bring out what we have just said and also use the scripture that should be born in the mind as we talk about who it is that, 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 that is baptized with the Holy Ghost. See, see what Jesus says in John 6, 45. It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught of God. But turn to Isaiah 54 and 13, whence this is taken and, and, and it reads, and all thy children shall be taught of, God, uh, of the Lord. The all of God are the children of God. Thus, it is that, that the evidence of being a true child of God, he whom the Spirit has come upon and indwells, is again set forth as one taught the word by the Holy Ghost. Well then, what do you do with those people that they have no use for anyone to teach? They have no use for studying the message. Oh, we just live, live a good life, you know, and that's all that's required. No, it's not. Catholic tells you that. How many were raised Catholic in here? Okay, you, you all know. You know, you live a good life, you know, and if you have more positive points than you have negative points, you're going to make it. Hey, in this message, they believe that. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Jacob was a shyster, but he loved the birthright. Esau was a good man. He took care of his pappy. And God hated him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Knowing that the evidence of a truly spirit-filled being, son of God, is that we hear and recognize and act upon the word for the day in which we live. Had Noah not heard and then recognized and then acted upon the word for his day, his family would have been swept away in the flood. Had Moses not heard and not recognized and not acted upon, the children of Israel would have perished in Egypt. But Father, you've given us a word for this hour. And that word is to get us ready for the adoption of sons. And so, Lord, we just pray that we take heed to every thought, every word that was spoken by your vindicated prophet. And take it back to the Bible so that we understand it left and right, up and down. So there's no way of being caught in the devil's trap. Help us, Father, now as we proceed with the other activities of the day. We pray that you'd be with us. May our conversations be truly God-centered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and may the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and give thee peace and give thee peace and give thee peace forever the Lord be gracious to you the Lord make his face shine toward you and give thee peace and give thee peace and give thee peace forever